We get it. In film school lighting classes, we always talk about how to eliminate shadows, get a beautiful soft light, use three-point lighting techniques, and use all of these together to create a perfectly lit image. But if we all follow the same techniques for every single shot that we ever do, the images will start to look flat and lack any depth. So today we're going to go over different ways you can add depth to your lighting setup and have a much more dynamic shot. So let's turn that 2D image into a 3D image. The most important thing I want to convey today is the importance of embracing shadows. If you watch a lot of sitcoms, you'll notice that lighting doesn't get a lot of recognition. Sitcoms are known for being vibrant and having a lot of extremely soft lighting, so there really isn't much negative fill or shadows. Oftentimes, sitcoms focus much more on acting and writing than they do cinematography and lighting. So there isn't going to be a lot of negative fill or hard lighting or anything like that. But when you go into much more dramatic shows and movies, you'll notice that in addition to being less vibrant in the coloring and the story, another trademark of dramas is that the lighting is often much harder and has stronger shadows. This is where the real advanced cinematography techniques come in. Part of being a director of photography involves knowing all aspects of light that are in your shot. This also means knowing where there isn't light, where there are shadows. In early lighting classes, we're taught to make those shots extremely clean and fill in all the shadows. While this is obviously a very important task to learn, being able to shape and control shadows is one thing that will really make you stand out from the crowd. Take a look at this Roger Deakins lighting setup here. It's pretty safe to say that there are more shadows than there are lights in the shot. As a result of being a master of both lighting and shadows, Deakins is able to make a two-dimensional image and use lighting to make it three-dimensional. He pays just as much attention to shadows as he does to his light, which is exactly why he's one of the great cinematography masters of our day. So let's apply this to storytelling. Let's say you have a scene in a film where a character is going through a difficult part of their narrative. If the acting and writing is dramatic, but you have a bunch of beautiful soft light, there's going to be a disconnect between your cinematography and your storytelling. But if you take your lighting setup and add shadows to it, embracing that negative fill, your lighting will agree much more with what's going on in your story. Your character will be in darkness, both metaphorically and literally. This is why I always like to stress that there is creativity in lighting and there is storytelling in cinematography. Leave a comment below right now and tell me your favorite way to use lighting to enhance your scene's narrative. So now that we've talked a little bit about some theory, let's go into the technique. The easiest way to generate shadows is of course to bring your light source more to either side of your subject's face. If you're outdoors, you can achieve a similar effect by having your subject turn their face until the sun is at their side, rather than directly in front of them or behind them. One storytelling trick you can do to enhance these is to combine these mechanisms by having your character look towards the light source, then at a moment of narrative significance, maybe they got bad news, maybe they revealed a different side to themselves, you can have your character turn to the side. So now what you've done is you've taken the happy lighting of your shot and you've added some deep shadows to it, to convey your character's inner turmoil. Now, let's take this a step even further and talk about the importance of controlling your ambience. Here's what I mean. Let's say your subject is in a room with bright white walls. If you turn your light to the side, yes, we will get those shadows that we talked about earlier, but those white walls are going to naturally bounce your side light into your shadows. Again, this is fine if that's what your story calls for, but if you really want to control your lighting and refine how your shadows play on your subject, you'll want to take what's called a flag or some black wrap to control the spill on that light. The black fabric of the flag will absorb the extra ambient light, up your contrast ratio, and give you a much more dramatic, refined look that has much more dimensions. So there's how you can use shadows to make your image look more three-dimensional. Remember, real life is not lit like a sitcom. The world is full of shadows. They're everywhere, so let's embrace them in your shots as well. What's another way you like to use shadows in your shot? Be specific. Tell us about techniques that you use and the result and what they look like. The best comment will win an Aperture M9. I'm Nares from the A-Team. Remember to like and subscribe to us on YouTube. Hit that notification bell. Tell a friend about this video and tell us more tutorials you'd like to see us make next. Happy lighting.